Hey everybody, welcome once again to Gaming Wednesdays, the lowest effort video game review show on the entirety of YouTube. Don't, 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 if, if there's one that's even less, I don't need to know about it. We'll just pretend this one's the worst, uh, or the lowest effort at least. So today I'm going to be talking about a particularly obscure game, um, an obscure game even among obscure games really, because this is Toho... Number nine, Phantasmagoria of Flower View. So for those who don't know Toho, Toho is a series of self-published um, bullet hell games that are that have a, a ridiculously rabid and massive following in Japan. Because each of these games basically centers around this girl, Reimu, who you can see silhouetted on the cover here. I think that's Reimu. Actually, maybe it's not. They all kind of look the same. That's not Reimu at all. What am I talking about? That's Reimu. Um, you can see Reimu here. She's the main character. You play as her in most of these games. And each game is about just... Um, it's a bullet hell game. You fly around as this little girl dodging all these fucking bullets that are just everywhere on screen. The craziest bullet patterns you'll ever see in your life. The game's mostly about fighting bosses. So each game will introduce five or six new bosses who are all these similarly cute girls... Um, they're all yokai, usually. Um, all of them wear fancy hats and, and very flowery gowns, and they all kind of look the same. And, uh, and each of them has just, like, little bits of weird dialogue that's not really comprehensible. But the fans will extrapolate from that and turn these characters into the most detailed characters out of anything in all of fiction. Each of these characters has an entire mythos behind them, more fan art than any other character you can think of from any other piece of media, um, more doujins, more stories, more fan art and fan fiction. It's just, it's, it's basically... Uh, uh, the idea is that each game has so little to go on with these characters that the fans just fill in the gaps based entirely on their aesthetic and the minor details of of who they are, of like what they're represented by in the game, how their s music sounds, how their bullet patterns look, um, you know, and like the vague hints in the st in the uh, story booklets and stuff like that. So from there, you extrapolate these extremely detailed characters. Now. This game is a little bit different from the other Toho games, because it is a bullet hell, but most of the Toho games are sort of an adventure, where you're playing as Reimu, and you're just, you'll, f like, basically she'll hear about something that's going on somewhere. Like, for instance, if we take uh, the Embodiment of Scarlet Devil, which is the first, like, popular game in the series, it's number five, and it's about, or maybe it's number six... I think it's number six. Embodiment of Scarlet Devil, where you you hear about, like, some shit that's going on in this mansion uh, somewhere. And so Reimu goes to fly out to the mansion. And, like, the first boss she fights is she's flying through the forest uh, on her way to the mansion. She fights a boss there. Then she's crossing over a lake and she fights the boss at the lake. Then she gets to the mansion and she has to fight the guard at the front door. Then she goes in and she's in the library and she has to fight the librarian. And then she goes and meets the head of the house and fights her. And so that's sort of the... The way that these games work is like you're on an adventure and you're fighting each boss along the way and trading brief dialogue before hearing some really kick-ass music and dodging a million bullets. But this game, rather than that, is a sort of split-screen battle game. And you can see what I mean if you look really hard at this, how like this is you and this is your opponent. It's a split-screen game where each of you has basically the same enemy and bullet patterns coming at you, and you're trying to destroy enough enemies in, in like, fast sequence and, like, rack up combos of, of destroying enemies to create more on the opponent's side. So basically, like, if you've ever, if you've ever played a Puzzle Fighter, the, the Street Fighter puzzle game, where, like, you know, you, you try to rack up a huge combo and it'll dump a bunch of garbage on the opponent's side that they then have to deal with. This is like that, but with enemies. So the more you kill, the better combos you rack up, the more you will cast, like, different spells and summon different stuff on the other guy's team, or on his side of the screen. And meanwhile, they're doing the same to you. So, you know, you have to dodge the normal enemies and the normal patterns while they're also throwing all this extra bullshit at you. So... Yeah, it's a really interesting, different style from the rest of the games, and it's uh, it's just a sequence of battles, of split-screen battles, of which there are nine, I think, in the main storyline. Um, 
So I love this game more than any other Toho game because it's a little bit more straightforward and easy and Toho games are hard as fuck. Like they're known for being some of the hardest games out there, especially on anything above easy mode. I have a hard time even on easy mode with most of these games. This is the only one I think I've beaten on like, I, I, I know I've beaten it on easy. I don't know if I've beaten it on normal, but I've made it to the end at least. Whereas like Imperishable Night, which is the, the easiest normal Toho game, I could, like, barely beat it on easy and could make it barely anywhere on normal. So, yeah, like, it's a little bit easier. It's a little bit more, um, uh, like, uh, simple to figure out. But the, mo the most important thing, the most interesting thing is that it has a huge roster of playable characters. You can play as, like, 10 or 11 different characters, I think. Um, whereas most of the games you get a choice of, like, three or four um, except for the fighting games where, where you can play most of them, but those are also really hard and complicated. So this is like the only one where you get a lot of character choice, which means a lot of variety in the way that you can approach your battle style. And I, th I'm pretty sure you can play this two player with split screen, um, you know, competition. I don't know if it has an online mode. I have never tried to explore that. I just play it by myself and I have a good time, but this is a, it's a, it's a very fun Toho game. If you've never played any Toho, I would not recommend starting with this. I would recommend starting with Imperishable Night, which is pretty much everybody's go-to uh, for, like, the starter Toho because it's the most addictive, the most just fun and easy to pick up. It doesn't have a lot of really complex systems because most of the Toho games will have some kind of complicated system that you have to learn in order to really master the game. Um, Imperishable Night is... One of the more straightforward ones, the bullets are just really cool. They have really cool patterns and stuff. And it's a great introductory. I think it's the eighth game in the series. So, you know, start with Imperishable Night. Um, and then you can go to, like, Embodiment of Scarlet Devil. Because that's the one that has, it's, like, the most culturally important. It's the one that has the most popular characters in it. Um, but then... I would also recommend this as, like, if the Toho format seems like it's not quite doing it for you, like, you enjoy the idea of, like, flying around and fighting uh, other cute girls and stuff and dodging bullets, but, like, actually trying to navigate these massive bullet patterns to shoot at a boss is too difficult. This is just mostly about, like, watching yourself. In a way, you could use this to train for other Toho games because it doesn't require you to do as much aiming whereas in the other games you have to try to like fight the boss and the enemies while also dodging bullets in this game you know actively attacking is definitely going to be helpful especially on higher difficulties to you know to kill the the boss you're fighting faster but if you're just holding down the attack button and dodging for your dear life and you last long enough there's a chance you'll win just through sheer force of uh you not getting hit you know so yeah uh I, I, I really like this game. I definitely recommend it uh, as a Toho noob and to other Toho noobs. Obviously, there's no sense in recommending these to somebody who already plays Toho. You know what you're in for. You know you know what the games are. You know why they're fun. So, um, yeah. This and Imperishable Night for a Toho newbie, I would highly recommend. And that's it.